it's Jason here from Ridgeline Overlanding. Thanks for hanging out with us. So today we're actually going to be looking at an updated walk around video. So I'm going to just take you through the truck, look at some of the mods that we've done. And this is actually a precursor video to an upcoming one that will be my two and a half year review where I will go deep on what's really working with the Honda Ridgeline and what's not. But for today, we just want to walk around, show you what I've done, bring you up to speed with the project. So if you guys are new to the channel, I want to just thank you for tuning in. Um, looking for a few more subscribers? A couple hundred more would be great. Get me to that monetization level. For starters, we're just going to do a straight up walk around video here. Going to go 360. So there's a 2021 Honda Ridgeline Sport. It's a Canada Sport, so it comes with a lot more features than the American Sport. Not sure why that is. I just know that it is. I've done quite a few mods and upgrades and uh, just look forward to sharing those with you. So. Here's the outside. You cannot tell from here just how pinstriped it is from many miles out in the BC backcountry. So let's have a look under the hood here. This is a largely stock 3.5 liter Honda J35 engine. Um, done a little bit of work here. We've got the, uh, the PRL intake, which is basically the increased uh, tube silicone housing uh, where it joins the factory setup and a resonator delete. Uh, hiding in here, we've got ourselves a K&N drop-in air filter. Uh, we've got a couple of circuit breakers here. This one is for the audio video system. And this one here is for the aux beam switching panel. So this guy's pretty interesting. So you run all of your exterior lighting into here. And then there's one set of wires that goes to a panel inside the vehicle. And that panel allows you to control all of your lights without having to run quite so many wires. So as I said, it's a 2021 Sport. I've got 57,904 kilometers on it. Pretty darn much trouble-free, which is good. That's what I expect from a Honda. So let's look a little bit uh, more exterior here. So these are uh, ditch lights. They're Caput brand. Caput's a local um, canopy and overland outfitter supplier. We've got these aux beam side shooters up here, which are just designed to light up the side profile. I don't use these a ton, but they're an inexpensive upgrade and, and they're really great when you're looking for camp spots late at night. And then I actually integrated the Baja Designs rock lights on either side of my license plate just to give me a little more uh, lighting when I'm backing up. These are definitely not uh, OE tailpipes either. Had those replaced a couple of times and just went with straight pipe, cut at a 45 degree angle, got them tucked in and out of the way because too often the ditches would be steep and I'd be scraping. That's also why we bought in the uh, Body Armor hitch slider. So this, as you can see from underneath, is a sliding plate so when you're getting into a deep ditch you now ride on that instead of on your uh, tailpipes and then she makes for a pretty sturdy step and in here a recovery point so i've got the cooper discoverer at3s they are a four season tire so they are snowflake rated and they are an upgraded 265 6018 size people ask me do they rub the short answer yes annoyingly so Generally not. Uh, the rims are a uh, die alloy wheel, 18 by eight. And these have been really good for me. Uh, between this, you can't really see in here at all, but just take my word for it. There's an HRG two and a half inch lift in the front and two inch lift in the back. And that also includes a one inch subframe drop. That's just to help keep the, the geometry as close to stock as possible. It handles like stock. The bigger tires, the lift, still will outhandle any other truck on the road. It's a great riding vehicle. It handles great. I have no complaints with this at all. Now we're going to get underneath. This is my Nolo Designs oil pan skid plate. And as you can see, this thing has been beat up. It's got some scars. Definitely proof that this truck is getting used and abused in the backcountry. Uh, further back, we've got uh, gas, gas tank skid plate and... Uh, rear diff skid plate. skid plate gas tank skid plate and then you kind of see it there rear diff plate let's get you a better angle how's that so if there was an overland edition from honda maybe this is what it would look like so what we've got is the uh, vantech p3000 ladder rack that is the heart of this overland build so that is basically the two racks and the rails that they mount on from there i have added in a custom cross beam here using unistrut I have mounted my ARB Tread Pro traction boards on here. Got a half decent little cable lock on here. I've got my Fisker's axe, 
My latest addition is this Waterport H2O to go, uh, 3.8 gallon water source. And this is fantastic because I can actually hook up a garden hose sprayer that it comes with and easily wash my dog, my feet, the sides of my truck, or whatever else I might want to do. We've got the Rotapax can back here for, uh, you know, fuel rations, and then a full size spare. So it's a pretty darn functional bed. Have ourselves a look here. We're going to uh, just move some of the GoPro gear and get this stuff out of the way. I'm using something really simple. This is a simple anti fatigue mat that you get on sale at a Harbor Freight or Princess Auto. Dirt cheap, easy to work with, pull it in, pull it out, good non slip grip. Uh, inexpensive uh, truck mat solution. And when I'm camping, I will literally just throw it down here. It's out of the way. I got something comfy to stand on, and it gives me better access to the trunk. So let's talk about the Honda trunk. This is a pretty, uh, pretty significant little uh, space creator here hiding down here. This is what you get when you don't have a quote unquote real truck. You get more usability. Factory spare tire used to live in here. Now we've got gear galore. Got my emergency food rations, my getaway bag, a few other pieces of gear. And then on the underside, I've created this custom mounting solution it's kind of janky, honestly, I'm just using shallow screws, uh, P-straps and shock cord, but it'll hold my machete, axe, uh, Fisker saw, and my um, trekking poles. The only downside is, you know, if you load up your truck with other gear, you then don't have access to your trunk. It's a small price to pay. All right, let's move along to the inside of the truck, because there's a ton going on in here. So we've got a significant audio upgrade. Uh, I've got Blam six and a half inch component speakers in the doors and in the pillars. Uh, full DSP uh, multi amp setup in behind the rear seat. And then at the heart of that is the 11 inch floating display from Kenwood. And this guy is, uh, she's a beast. Just a basic Amazon phone holder, which keeps my phone right next to my, uh, right next to my monitor. We've already talked about the Oxbeam switch panel. Here is the pedal commander. And this is a great feature because the Honda Bridge line comes with a little too much pedal lag and you can dial out that pedal lag and get your throttle response nice and tight. So it does not add power, but it does make your vehicle faster in that you get access to your power much quicker. Down here, we've got the uh, scan gauge two, and that gives you a variety of diagnostics and um, different temperatures and whatnot. I use it primarily for transmission fluid temperature to make sure that I'm not cooking my tranny fluid when I'm out on a hot day doing a big climb. Uh, that is one of my GoPro mounts. That's the one I use for uh, dash camming and uh, just getting trail footage. I've hardwired in a USB-C cable, nice and clean and out of the way. And that uh, just comes unclicked and clips into the GoPro and I'm good to go. And then here I've got a JS Innovations dash cam, which is just literally for your general dash cam stuff. You know, somebody hits me and I can try to prove it wasn't my fault. All right, let's jump to the back of the truck, see what we got going on in the back seat. We having fun so far? Hope so. So on both seat backs, I have got Molly panels, a pet seat cover from Costco. This is a lifesaver. I hardly ever take it out. Always go mountain biking with my dog and well, I don't like a mess. Here's the Blue Eddy, uh, 700 watt, and just a generic inverter from Costco. And then this bad boy is a custom made sealed box for my pair of JL Audio 10 inch subwoofers. On the floor, we have got trucks mat mats. They look quilted, um, they're not. They just appear to be that way. Um, they clean up really nice, and they got all the raised edges and whatnot. These do a great job of just keeping the dirt under control. You don't end up getting too much in here. You know, I'll pull this back and vacuum it every couple of months. Not a big deal at all. Let's go back to the bed a little bit. So I talked about using Unistrut for this custom bracket, and that's been handy, just really tapping in to two points on the Vantec rack. So we got the uh, Unistrut running here along all three sides of the bed, and that was just to give me better mounting points, make it easier to put what I want where I want. Uh, the Rotapax went in using the Toyota Tacoma mounting plate because this is very similar um, in dimension to what uh, Toyota and Nissan use. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with us. This video went a little longer than I thought, but 
turns out I've done a little more work to the truck than I remember. So hope you enjoyed it. Hope this inspires you to build up your own vehicle and, and be able to, you know, ready, willing, and able to take it outdoors and go explore and have your own adventures. Um, this is by no means some rugged Jeep, but like I tell people, it gets me where I need to go. So yeah, thanks for joining us. Be sure to hit that like, subscribe button, all that good stuff. And until next time, and there will be a next time, go play outside.